Hey, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6. We are a science fiction review show. And right now we are streaming to Outpost Con, a uh, science and science fiction conference. Uh, thanks to Brian Dunning for inviting us on the show. We're really looking forward to this. So in this show, in this panel, which is actually one of our shows, we are going to be talking about science fiction technology. And we're going to be talking about what, what technology that's commonly featured in science fiction is likely to happen, is almost definitely not going to happen, and which ones could go either way. And we'll give our opinions on that. Who wants to get started with their favorite technology? I don't. I'll start. I mean, let's, let me have the, the uh, communicator. Um, this one's easy. Just as an example, <laughs> like communicators exist today. Uh, this this communicator can talk to the ship that's in orbit, right? This is from Star Trek. Here's one right here. Yeah, that's right. Actually, I like this one better because this one's it doesn't better, look as yeah. cool, but you get you, you seemingly get more information out of that. You remember when uh, Sulu's face appeared? You know, appeared in the little the screen there. Um, the thing the thing about this communicator, though, and I'm not sure, is it can it speak subspace? It, it, can it go? Well, let's let's transition to that. So yeah, so just communicator technology. Like we've already we've already bettered Star Trek, you know, basically in, in our tech. Um, but let's talk about subspace communication because that's very common. Like for example, on Star Wars, uh, they're they're talking in real time in real time with um, with holographic you know three D images across light years. Mm -hmm. So light, making a connection across light years in real time. So plausible, implausible, will it ever happen? There's no I, way it can happen. I think it has. The answer has got to be no. Absolutely. At least. According to our current understanding of the laws of physics, you, it, it violates Einstein, right? You can't have any information getting from point A to point B faster than the speed of light. There is this speed of light information envelope, right, mm -hmm. that you cannot violate, um, even if there's entanglement, right? So that's so some science fiction I have read, um, for example, would communicate instantaneously across arbitrary distance by having two crystals that were entangled together and then separated. Mm -hmm. And then as long, and the, as long as you maintain the entanglement, you can communicate between those two crystals across light years instantaneously. But I don't think even that would work, right? Because no, it, it wouldn't because by design, if something's in, if two particles say are entangled and one is spin up and one is spin down, and, but you don't know what they are, then, then you examine one, oh, this is spin up, then you know that that particle a billion light years yeah. away has to be the opposite spin. That, so that's the idea, but that information is random. You can't use it to communicate. It's not information, yes. it's random data, and you, yeah. you, and, you, and you can never even, you would have to travel at the speed of light or close to the speed of light to that person to say, hey, was yours, you know, what, what was yours? <laughs> you know, so it defeats the purpose, but the bottom line is it's random, you can't communicate information with entanglement. Yeah. So the answer in terms of instantaneous subspace or whatever, you know, they're calling it subspace because they had to basically invent new laws of physics right. to make okay, it happen. That's fine. It's so fine yeah, fiction. so we could say that it's impossible based upon our current understanding of the laws of physics, yeah. you would have to invent new physics in order to make it possible. So I, I, but I, that's not very plausible. You know, that is basically then magic is what you're saying. Right. It, even when I was younger, it occurred to me when they're in hyperspace yeah. and a communication comes in, I'm like, wait a second, if that communication comes in to the ship and they're in hyperspace, the communication has to be traveling faster than them traveling yes. in hyperspace, yes. which is ah. faster than the speed of, it's like, so how does that work? So, yeah. But it would have to anyway, because it's communicating across light here. Now, That's of right. course, it's an indispensable plot device. Yeah. For, for much I'm science I'm happy fiction. to suspend it. I mean, look, we're not complaining about any of these things. We're just talking no, just about it is, it is what it is. Yeah. It's, a, it's an aesthetic, you know, of you, whether or not you like the hard science fiction, which I tend to like. See, I like exploring how inconvenient would it be <laughs> to yeah. not be able to communicate, because then it creates lots of problems. You know, you can't just wire the Federation and say, come send help, right. you know, or yeah. whatever. You, you, you don't know, but, you know, your, your knowledge of what's going on is limited by the speed of light. Yeah, so that's basically like the rule of science fiction is you get one solid gimme, right? You could maybe get, like, get, squeeze another one or two you know, auxiliary ones out of that, but, right, and you kind of build your science fiction world around that. And that's it's a necessary plot device. But, but yeah, Star yeah. Wars didn't follow that. Star Wars has got lightsabers, blasters, the force, gravity plating, gravity well, shields. Star, Star Wars is not science fiction, it's space fantasy. I know, but still, you know, it's right. still. But that's the point, it's, it's, there are so many gimmies in Star Wars that it's like it actually stretches the definition of science fiction. It's actually more fantasy yeah, than Yeah, you're right, fiction. I agree with that. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so let's move on to another technology. Since you brought up, brought up Star Wars, I'm gonna talk about lightsabers. You know, what, there's no better sci-fi tech than a lightsaber. Yeah. So how well, plausible okay. is it, come on. It's how awesome. plausible it's awesome, is but... it that we're gonna be able to be wielding one of these things? Um, so I give this a plausible in one way, but not in another, mm -hmm. right? The basic technology is fine. You have a magnetic field constraining a plasma and the plasma is really hot. Wait, why plasma? Why pla I mean, because it's good. It could, could be, be a laser, it could be a, it's a lightsaber. It could be a laser beam, a type of laser beam that's kind of like- But it is plasma. That's but what it is plasma. That's, in canon. that's the technology. Yeah. Is that, oh, is that canon? Yeah, is that, that is canon. Plasma, okay. And actually, the, I think the idea works better than a laser because why would the laser hurt you from the side? But anyway. Why isn't it, why isn't it a, Plasma saber. Okay, never mind. Go ahead. <clears throat> so, uh, but the so the plausible, the basic tech is plausible. Um, in fact, there's a YouTube video of some guy who made one sort of like a sort of plasma. Yeah, but it doesn't work thing. like a, I know it doesn't. You know, but it's good like, effort. Good but effort. you can make a cone of plasma, sure. But um, but the energy is the problem. Yeah, the right? battery, the thing that the, you can't. Yeah. There's no way that any battery. I think in the foreseeable future would ever so, be able to hold that. So energy. some people have done calculations. Uh, like how much energy would a lightsaber yeah. need? And they, they based it on the notion that um, in, in the first movie, in episode one, they cut through a steel door with a lightsaber. They're like, mm -hmm. okay, if you're cutting through steel with a lightsaber, it's gotta be generating this much thermal energy. Um, and how, how much energy would it take to provide that? So the number was like in AA batteries, it like needed over 24,000 AA batteries to power your lightsaber, or the output of one and a half typical nuclear reactors. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, we were basically wearing a nuclear reactor, uh, you know, or you're carrying it in your hand. But I, what I do think might one day be plausible um, I mean, you know, this much energy in, in like the size of the handle of a lightsaber, mm -hmm. it's gotta matter, be matter, matter, matter antimatter yeah. or something yeah. like that. But, but maybe you could wear like a backpack with the energy source and, and then the cable yeah, going then, to your lightsaber. You have, what about back flipping? I mean, you just have to take that into account. Yeah, all right. Well, and then somebody <laughs> takes out a pistol and shoots you in the head, yeah. but, you know. All right, there's, there's, <laughs> other, there's other problems with lightsabers. Uh, one, no, the, te the, the technology uses a kyber crystal, which doesn't exist, and you know you got to remove, strip all that out, right? Um, the other thing is, which I find really fascinating, is the idea of en energy absorption. Mm -hmm. The thing is putting out so much heat that it would probably kill the person yeah, using wielding it. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So this, it has to absorb the heat energy back in. Like, like, like I guess it, you know, no one's even like suss this out. I've read a little bit about it online. It's a very, very provocative right. idea, but they're right. The amount of heat it would take to put it into a steel door and you cut, you know, you cut open the yeah. hole and everything. It would, that would, that would make the whole room become hundreds right. of degrees right. hot. Maybe that's the idea. Up. You give one of these to your enemy and then he sparks it up and then it just fries. It melts it. Yeah. It just melts right You'll win. The, the other thing is the, <laughs> the, there's a problem with the stopping of the blade. There's mm -hmm. a definite problem with how long the blade is and, and how it stops. Um, the guy that made the plasma mm -hmm. lightsaber, you know, he did have the whole thing, you know, yeah. there tubes going up to it and everything. And it just kind of peters out at the end, you know, it, it gets less and less powerful as it, go, as it right. goes on. Um, but lightsabers, you know, when you see them in a show, they're definitively like end, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that just wouldn't, that couldn't happen. It just wouldn't work that way. You'd actually need something running up the length of the lightsaber. Like that, that I mean, well, you, you can imagine that they figured out a way to constrain a magnetic field in that shape. I'll buy that, that you can figure out some kind of way within the laws of physics to make that happen, to tune of the magnetic field. I don't have a problem with that. And one last problem. Yeah. When they hit each other, they, they stop. They can't cut through each other. Well, that's because of the magnetic field. So yeah. again, they're, that's now the magnetic field against magnetic field. Okay, and that's why there's the flash? I guess, I mean, I think that's, again, I don't, you don't, have to, I don't think you have to break the laws of physics for that to work. Yeah, you can sort of imagine a way that that would work. For okay. me, the big problem is just that much energy. And the other thing is, if you could have that much energy in the palm of your hand, that in and of itself would be an awesome technology, yeah, right? right? right. That, you, you mean you could basically run a city off of your lightsaber, yeah. you know? Um, that, that's the technology. This is like the, you know, a pretty uh, you know, lame application of a really awesome energy technology. But they, yeah, are, right. they are so cool though. Oh, I mean, course. just there's just something you know, epically awesome. One of the coolest things that humans have created is the lightsaber. <laughs> yeah. The idea of a lightsaber. Let's yeah. continue with weapons because there's some similarities. Like when we, let's see yeah. your, uh, 
This is a stormtrooper uh, heavy no, blaster. No, it's a rebel blaster. Oh, that's the rebel blaster. You lose one key point. This is a rebel blaster. Uh, <laughs> how did, did Stormtrooper. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, are you crazy? <laughs> yes, but basically these these shoot plasma bolts. Yeah. Um, I did. I have read in the past that some say that there is an object that goes along with the bolt. I've read other people saying no, but the bottom line is it's a it is again it's plasma inside yes. some type of thing that's containing the plasma. Right. right. So again, there's got to be some massive energy source. It's yep. you, it has to be able to generate plasma, probably has to constrain it in a magnetic field until it's released, right? And then it shoots out the front end as a little ball of plasma, which but does a it, lot of damage when it hits. Again, yeah, that's sure, nothing sure, that breaks the laws of physics plasma, there either. But, I mean, is the plasma already there, ready to go, or does it create the plasma with... In the it's got to create, it. create it's right. I mean, within a, think about that. Within a half a second, bam! You've got a ball of plasma. Yeah, that's, that's okay. That's, that's, that's not that big a deal. Uh, it's not sure. It's not impossible, but I'm saying it's impressive as hell if you think about it's it. A lot of shooting energy. plasma, though, that's the thing. Like having it leave at a speed, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, and the cool thing uh, that I do like about the idea of blasters, though, is. That you know how the bolt doesn't go, it's not going like as fast as light. Yeah. It's going, it's not light. You, you could yeah. look at it. Yeah, it's and, not light. It's a ball of stuff that's yeah, flying. Yeah. But, but plasma could behave that way. Yeah. You could have a plasma bolt shoot and it's going, you know, maybe only a few hundred miles an yeah. hour. And there's some phys there's some physicalness to it, so it might have some recoil or whatever. Again, it's not a laser. It yeah. is it is a, a blaster, right. it's not a laser. It's a bomb. I mean, would it just go right through you and then probably the next four walls kind of like an alien's acid blood? I, I guess mean, it would just go for a while. Depends on how hot it is, you know, how plasma is plasma. It's hot as hell by definition. Yeah. But it's not one temperature, right? You could have plasma at different temperatures. Yeah, it could be low. Yeah, it could what's be, the, yeah, what's that, the lowest temperature it would have to be? In order? I guess it's a plasma of what? I mean, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Plasma just means the electrons have been stripped off it. So you have like right. hydrogen plasma. It's just hydrogen ions mm -hmm. with, and, then, and therefore it's magnetic, which is why you can constrain it with the magnetic field. Which is critical. Which is, which critical. is critical. That's why it works in a lightsaber. So what's the, what, Ed, what's the low, I, I, we should have looked this up before, but what's the lowest temperature at which I, I hydrogen, think, hydrogen turns into a plasma? I remember the term now, low temperature plasma. So yeah, yeah I guess it is possible. Yeah, but, but if you have super high, yeah, you're right. If you had super high temperature plasma, then yeah, it could, just, it could go through more that, that's than That's what I'd want to use. Person, yeah, yeah, but they show like, you know, stormtrooper armor can, can hold it back, you know, if, if it's not a direct hit, you know. But there have been people who have gotten hit by that and not died. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. It isn't. A, sure, it be, isn't an instant death. Yeah, it's like localized. If you get shot in the leg, why would you die? Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's just like a, like a burn, a burn hole, right? Right. Okay. Like, like yeah. a laser. But I like the of. plasma rifles on Fallout Four. Yes. Because when you kill the guy with the plasma bolt, they turn to a pile of goo. Yes. They yes. You can hear it. You hear it. They completely <laughs> dematerialize. You got a little right. pile of goo in front of you. So now let's <laughs> talk about uh, energy weapons, different types of, you know, like, mm -hmm. what would you call them, Bob? Uh, like, like ray guns. Ray I think, gun, I yeah. think the classic mm -hmm. ray gun from like the 50s, to me, that, that's, it's directed energy, different types of energy. Like a but, it, but yeah, it's not a, it's not a projectile of any sort. To me, that's what makes a ray gun a ray gun. Um, so would, does, would you say that it has to be electromagnetic spectrum? It could be some esoteric um, energy that you, that, we don't know about a type of okay, so something it could be unusual. some other kind of particle, right? Like a neutrino you know, yeah. gun or something. What, about, probably, what right. about radiation? Wouldn't affect you very much. A radiation, yeah, based absolutely. Weapon. Yeah. It's not just not a projectile like a like a blaster or a pistol is a is a yeah. uh, is a project emits a projectile. Some directed energy, and it's lots. So of it's going at the speed of light, by definition. But doesn't it have the same limitations that a that a uh, a blaster does? Meaning it, it has to have an energy source. Sure. Well, that's that's the classic problem: is is how much energy can you is portable, and can you can you do that? And we may. And I don't know, what, what are your thoughts on what it's going to take? Is it possible to have that much energy that you can carry in your hand? I mean, that, that's the question, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, that's a, that's a tremendous amount of energy. Can we ever make something that's like, like a phaser or a laser pistol that will kill people? Well, from a physics perspective, there is a limit to energy density. There's mm -hmm. only so much energy you can pack into a certain amount of space. So, you know, I mean, I, I guess with, with high gravity... Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, under 1G. Yeah, like yeah. If, you're, if you're under thousands of G's, you know. You can pack a lot of energy into a very small, uh, small space, but I, I don't yeah. think, I don't think, you know, it, to me, I look at it more like somebody might be able to make one and it would be like a one shot. One or two just shot just one thing. thing. Or if you've got a yeah. good backpack. I mean, the, some of these chemical lasers, man, they're, they're efficient and they're powerful. I think we'll get there one day. I don't think it's breaking the laws of physics to say, to have something that's very, very portable 
maybe perhaps a rifle which or which is why I liked in you know the the, uh, the the Star Wars Rogue One where the guy had a, the, the laser machine gun basically and he had a backpack on his yeah. energy source yep. and you didn't have the cable going to it. I mean, that's realistic. You know, if you're going to up the energy, you got to up the energy source. Uh, but yeah, the, it, 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 like many technologies we might talk about. Um, they don't necessarily break the laws of physics, but it all comes down to your energy source. Yeah. Right? If you have a powerful, like, you know, like um, uh, Iron Man suit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sure. If you really did have this exotic thing, you know, energy source, whatever, you know, the, that right. plasma induction, whatever source that he had. First of all, that would, again, that's how you're going to use it. You're not going to transform the world with your energy source. But um, if you did have that compact, <laughs> really powerful energy source, there's all sorts of cool things you could do with it that, that are plausible right. and can happen. Yeah. But it's a, it all comes down to the plausibility of the power source itself. And that's why I do think, you know, just th that's a kind of a big dimmy, though, to be honest with sure. you. And I, I do, it's so common now. I do appreciate science fiction where they think about, like, how much energy would this cost? And it becomes another obstacle to deal with. It's a plot device. It's like, yeah, you can have, yeah, sure, you can have a laser rifle, but the energy is gonna be the huge limiting factor. Right. Uh, and you're gonna constantly be having to get it, you know, to recharge it or to get another energy source or whatever. And, and you're gonna run out quickly, you know, and maybe projectile weapons are low tech, but you can carry a lot more bullets than you can energy for, mm -hmm. you know, for, for laser bolts. And that's know. one of the things that annoys me in a lot of science fiction is that you have this device and you're thinking, wait a second, if you did have this energy source, say, or this ability or this technology, the ramifications for civilization would be so vast and yeah. we're not seeing it in anywhere in, in the universe and the world building that they did. And that's frustrating. Like, come on. You got you can't just have this magical item and ignore the effect it would really have. Yeah. yeah unless the person like, you know, Iron Man as an example, you know, he created his suit. I mean, there, were, there are parts of the story. I think he did, you know, he was supplying energy and things like that. My big problem with the, the Iron Man suit is that he needs inertial dampeners in order to do the things that he does. He can't fall and suddenly stop even though he's in the suit. Mm -hmm. He would turn to jelly in the suit. Right. So he would need right. something to re re take that energy out of his body before he turns to, to sludge inside that or suit. Or something that, automatic, that, that that comes on and automatically decelerates him at a, at a reasonable speed, yeah. you know? Um, he can still hit hard, but it's gonna, it's like Superman, like someone's falling from the building and Superman catches you you're still you, dead. You're, you're still dead yeah. because you've stopped Snapped your neck. suddenly. That's yeah. the fault that's exactly yeah. It's a sudden <laughs> yeah. stop. So shall we move on then to gravity and all of its ramifications, yes. including inertial dampeners, gravity plating. Yep. So again, this is kind of a necessary plot device for depending on yeah. your budget, you know, of right. uh, a lot of a lot of science fiction. Uh, where you just have like gravity plating, so you have one G on your ship. You don't have to have your actors pretend like they're in zero G. Um, I, although I have to say, uh, like the expanse gets around it just by having like the magnetic shoes, and it doesn't quite deal with it. I mean, you, they also have to be very careful with everybody's hairdo. Yeah. You, know, you, you know, everyone has to have their hair up because if your hair was down, it would be floating. Yes. So you yep, can't no true. floating hair. And but, and, and but it's complex because if you look complicated. at even the scripts, if you look at the scripts um, in the expanse, the scripts actually is, I think they have like a different color based yeah. on the gravity w where the environment is, and they treat it like a character, and it's difficult. And I love how well, well I love how it. they treat it. Yeah. It's fantastic because that's how it's really going to be, folks. Right. But or and you just see hard, you just have gravity plating, one G. Yeah, magic, gravity plating. Well, but gravity, you, know, you could do it anywhere. The thing again with gravity plating, part of, part of it first is I, I did a deep dive on this. They don't have an answer to. Uh, they just say things that uh, there's a machine that generates gravity. Yeah, a like graviton yeah. generator or something. Yeah, so they never go into detail because they really don't have to. Right. right. But we don't we don't have the physics now to create a gravity plate. No way. Right? We don't have no the way. physics now. So now. I but mean, wait, Steve, I found out something. Well, Probably this is a separate not. question. So do we not have the physics now or do we have the physics to say it's impossible? I, Those are two different things. I would think that we I would think that you can't artificially create gravity that way. It's not like you turn a machine on and it's creating gravity. So uh, I, I don't know. So I think that there's, here's my question. Because energy has mass and mass has gravity. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, if you had enough energy, you could create the gravity. But it, but the but it would be prohibitive, right? You would in order to create one G, you would need enough energy to create one planet Earth worth of mass. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. So it, the and amount how of much energy, energy is that? It's pro prohibitive. I would. That's non-trivial amount yeah. of energy. Beyond that, even. Yeah, yeah. So it might it may be not technically impossible. But so impractical yeah. that it's basically impossible. Yeah, but don't forget, Steve. If you have an, enough 
mass. I mean, base, if you have enough mass energy in one spot, you're going to create a black hole, right? If it's, if it's, you, you well, have that's to, the other thing. Right, it's, a, it's the mass of the earth in a ship. Right. Yeah. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. It's <laughs> a huge problem. problem. Oh, you could be cut. Oh, I never thought about right? it that way. If you have too much, if you have too much gravity in too small a space, it will, it will collapse right. in on exactly. itself. Exactly. And the problem, the problem with gravity, Steve, is that like for, for an electric field, it's, there's charges, negative and positive. Mm -hmm. With gravity, it's one charge, mass energy. It's always attractive. So you're not, you're not, you're not going to have these. So like no way gravity either? It's, you're not going to that would be the, awesome. Anti-gravity would solve a lot of problems. Yeah, it would. Well, p well, there are some, it's not a done deal though, that, um, that anti-gravity or, an, or anti-particles, like <clears throat> you say, whatever, any anti-particle would fall up in a gravitational field. We haven't, we're not a hundred, hundred percent sure. We're fairly sure, not a hundred percent sure that it would fall up. If it did fall up, then you could have, um, in your ship, a matter floor and antimatter ceiling that could, that could do what, kind of what we're talking about. But do you want to mix an, you know, an antiparticle ceiling with a matter flo a floor. I don't want to get those two things together because, I yeah. mean, yeah, everything will be vaporized. Um, so I, I think you could confidently say that anti-gravity like that, manipulation of gravity, creating gravity like that is never going to happen. And it's not just creating gravity, like, like you turn it on and it's 1G, you know, whatever creature you are, whatever G you want it to be. I was, I was thinking earlier that, you know, you see the Millennium Falcon like take off from a planet and it goes up in outer space and as it gets farther and farther away from, from the planet, the gravity is decreasing and the ship has to expertly keep the ship always, the experience of the, yeah. you know, the people who inhabit the ship at 1G, which means it's not doing anything while you're in the atmosphere because there's still gravity. There's gravity. Except when you go like this, like are they, are they feeling yeah. any of that? But when you get way out into yeah. outer space, it has to subtly you know, it, it has yeah, to turn the gravity on as you leave the gravity field exactly. of the planet. Yeah. So, it, so that, that part I think is also yeah. like. Yeah. Oh, you did, but you have to say, all right, the ship has, you know, really powerful AI type of computer systems that does do exactly that. Right. It manages the, gra the gravitational experience of the people on board, including inertial dampeners, because again, the maneuvers would turn people to goo. Yeah. You know, and if, you, if you've ever seen like a video of riding on a light beam, you've got to see like those videos, like if you're going at the speed of light past the earth, and then you really get a feel for what that looks like. And then you look at, like, go look at Star Wars. They're, like, zipping along at the speed of light. You know, they're, like, moving about that quickly when you see, like, planets fading in the background. Yeah. That's, and right. they got to that speed really quickly. The acceleration would have been fatal, you know, a hundred right. times over. So that Star Trek, like a Star Trek example, you got, if you go to full impulse, which is, pr like, pretty yeah. much the speed of light. And if you do that within an hour, which is, you know, an hour to slow, to accelerate to the speed of light. That's 4,000 Gs. 4,000 Gs. 4, they do it Gs. in seconds. For right. an hour. You, right. For an That's hour. an hour. You can do it in seconds. You multiply it. I well, mean, they obviously would be have salsa to, at the back of the ship. They have I mean, to be, be entering done. some type of, you know, some type of subspace type of thing where it's, you know. They just they just throw out the term inertial dampeners. Yeah. But, but keep in mind, <laughs> Heisenberg we're talking we're talk Heisenberg compensators. We're talking about the difficulty in, in managing 1G. The acceleration they have to manage thousands of Gs. Yeah, you're right. It's, that, that's, it's, the, 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 right. it's an orders of magnitude right. harder problem. Right, to, to shield against that. So if you want to if you want to mimic gravity, I mean, there's yeah. three types of acceleration. There's gravitational acceleration. Mm. This is like, you know, like within a gravitational yeah. field, a real gravitational field. Then there's linear acceleration. So yeah. you're accelerating to create like this, what essentially is gravity, essentially 100%, almost, not, not quite though, mm -hmm. compared, Pretty close, to, though. compared to the Earth's gravity. Um, and then there is rotational or centripetal galaxy yeah. uh, rota uh, acceleration where you're rota where yeah. you're rotating, and that's a, that's it. Where if you and want that's gravity, what we're that's be what you got to do. Yeah. That's, that's what we're, we're going to be using. Right. Yeah. That's why the design of almost every spaceship in science fiction is wrong. If they design yeah. it like a ship where you're standing up and going in this direction, no, you would be standing in the direction of the acceleration right. so that the gravity is pushing up on your feet. Right. Right. You would always be standing up in that direction. But That's how you would cool. design ships. <laughs> I know, it, it, because it violates our antiquated sense of what a ship, ship. looks yes. like a sailing vessel and, but again that's why i like hard science fiction where they they really think about and solve all these problems with real physics like yeah you would be accelerating in, the, in that direction that's how you would be creating your artificial gravity it puts limits like with the expanse when they got to pull 10 g's they got to take some drug and they got to strap in and, see, yeah, and it's yeah. still going to f them up you yeah. know yeah. so the acceleration is a massive limiting factor it's in huge. that world and it becomes a plot device in and of itself 
But again, you just throw out terms like inertial dampeners and you and just and gravity right. plating, and you just pretend like you're you're on Earth, right? So, so until we become robots, G's are going to be an That's issue. Right. G's are a massive issue when you're talking about travel. All right, let's Absolutely. move on to like we have a tricorder here, uh, but medical devices, advanced medicine, like so, starting with the tricorder concept. Mm -hmm. The tricorder can read, you know, scan you, mm -hmm. which you know, scanning, you know, okay, we have scanning type devices today. They're you know, like get an MRI, you know, blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that with an MRI, you have to be really still in order for it to do the imaging. I could see future technology where it would be able to scan someone. You know, the, the, they're the, getting faster with it now where you don't have to. They can actually scan a beating heart now. So, oh, good. Yeah. So I, I think the tricorder is like the communicator in that it's very plausible and we're actually going to exceed what the capability that we see like in Star Trek. It's just gonna take a little bit longer, but we're sort of seeing those pieces come into place one by one. So the, like, the ability, to, we already can like use um, you know, light in order to tell like the components. Mm -hmm. Like just shining a light through your hand, you could read the oxygen, the oxygen energy, level. Yeah. And then we're also getting the ability, not just oxygen, but anything in your blood, right? Where you could pretty much do that you know, by passing light through it. You can use ultrasound yeah. to read it. Um, you can use you know, magnetic waves you know, to create yeah. all kinds of imaging. You, you combine that with advanced software, which is also advancing very, very quickly. So I think, you know, obviously like detecting your heartbeat is nothing, you know, detecting the electromagnetic waves of your of your brain, we could do that now. This is really just shrinking down existing right. technologies. Miniaturization. Yeah, it's just miniaturizing existing technologies. There's really nothing that the tricorder does that we don't already have some version of or mm -hmm. the antecedents of in use today. So that's a very plausible, I think, sci-fi device. In a tricorder, there's different kinds of tricorders. Yeah. Right? There's, 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 they can check Medical the environment. engineering. And, and I, I wonder in, in, like, in Star Trek in particular, like are they calling back to the ship and using the ship sensors to give them the information? Or is that device actually you know, topographically reading I think it things? does both. I think it can do both, yeah. yeah. All right, well, yeah, so that's another one. Yep, that's, that's not really that implausible right. to get that yeah, at all. Um, let's what move else? on to time travel. And the, you know the TARDIS is a time travel no. machine. No, it's not so, going to happen. So it depends on the, it depends what you're talking about. So traveling in the future at a at a pace greater than one second per second, absolutely. Sure, that's time that, dilation. That's been time dilation. Because so there's um yeah. there's a there's relative velocity time dilation. So the faster you go. You, you you hit relativistic speeds and ship time to you seems normal, but, but how about time in relative can, dimension space? Oh yes, <laughs> very nice. So you could travel at relativistic speeds, close to the speed of light, for a week, come back home, and it's a century or millennia later. So that's sure. absolutely what sure. would happen. Okay, back in time, um, not but, so much. Well, wait. There's also gravitational time dilation. If you yeah. orbited a black yeah. hole near near, I mean, we're we're aging more slowly now than somebody in a in a plane, for example. Well, yeah, but so, so minutely. Though. I know, but if you orbited a black right, hole, but not relative could, to our Ourselves, though, right, right. Your your experience of time is always the same. It's always the same. Yeah. That, that that's a gimme. So that so that travel in the future, sure, not a problem. In the past, that's that's the it, that's the real issue. Uh, many scientists don't believe it. Uh, you've got the causality problem. H how could this possibly work if you go and kill your your grandfather? The classic grand grandfather paradox. Uh, I loved Hawking had a um, chronology protect uh, chronology protection. protection agency where where macroscopic objects will never be able to go back in time because because of all, all of these yeah, issues. like the laws of the universe conspired to make it impossible because it would create a paradox so a universe maybe where it is possible can't exist mm -hmm. in a way right but I, I think physicists are trying to figure just trying to say can we prove that it's impossible right and we are not there yet we're not there we're yet. not there yet we, we, we can't prove that it is possible but they haven't proved that right. it's impossible, and, and but it's not looking good. No, we not can looking say good. That. So, looking so here's good. what it's so here's what they're saying. So um, there are certain solutions to general relativity that seem to allow seem to allow traveling in the past, and these are, cl are called closed time-like loops. Yeah. So basically, it's it's specific uh, configurations of space, time, and motion that potentially could allow you to, to, could, to could allow some travel in, into the past. So an example of this is the classic wormhole. You would, you would basically take one end of a wormhole and accelerate it to rel relativistic speeds. Well, think about that for a second. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine, yeah, yeah I'm gonna grab it? this wormhole and accelerate it. How would that even work? But this is what the theory says. So you accelerate it and then you bring it, then you bring it back. And then basically one end and th the ends basically are pathways to different time periods in some way. The downside is you are always, if you travel through it, 
you wouldn't be trying time traveling. The observers would would think that you're that you're traveling, but not you. So even you couldn't go back in time, even with that, even yeah. with that. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is that it doesn't look good at all, and we're gonna have to wait till we really get a handle on quantum gravity to say to the nth degree, no, this is not possible, really. And so we won't know for sure. Not looking good. So yeah. I hope it is impossible because it's it's dangerous. You know. Like, yeah. I mean, you could also posit things like, well, you can go in the past, but it's in a it's in a different universe. Well, who the hell so, knows? That, and that's, that's you know, very unsatisfying. Yeah. And it would be interesting in some ways, of course. But it's not real time travel when someone says traveling into the past. It's not the same thing. Well, it's how, a different, different how compelling an argument against time travel into the past is it that no one has traveled from our future to current time? as far as we know. It's, or even the future of another universe showing up saying, hey, I'm from your future, even though it's a parallel, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it, it, there's at least no evidence that that has happened. Right. And you would think, you know, you could argue that they're doing it in such a way that it's not detectable, but okay. But some that's people, just, that's just an argument. Some scientists words. say, though, that, that you can't, when we eventually create some type of time traveling device, you can never travel before, before, before it was created. Device was created. So you gotta wait till it was created, but wait a second, but still. But why, is that, just, is that just a plot device or is no, that? No, actually I think, a theory to why? I think why that's that how a wormhole would work. That's, that's how Yeah, that's how right, I read of the wormhole. Right? You create Once a wormhole. you start hole, accelerating it. And then from that point forward, you can always go back in time to the point in which it was created. Kind, Some, yeah, something like that. From an observer's uh, okay. point of view. All right, that, a, that's, but that's really a weird way to look at it. I get it. I mean, look, right. the, the people who do, who really understand this stuff, you know, I, I can see them saying it. But when you say that to me, I'm like, well, wait a second. But you're going back in time. What does it matter whether when the wormhole started? You're right. Like, so, but but if aliens made a wormhole a, a billion years ago, then then and uh, then we could use that wormhole to go back. To sure, that's years. right. It's even yeah. we, we would find this wormhole. We'd have to find right. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're pretty yeah. safe saying traveling into the past not going to happen. Yeah, I think that I, that one is just about as implausible as anything. Yeah. All right, what about transporter? We joked about the oh Heisenberg compensators. There's so many problems with the transporter. There's a lot of problems with it, right? Let me, let me give the, my quick All right, complainy one, too. <laughs> you know, I love it. It's fun. Um, they inst in, When they were writing Star Trek, they, they actually created the transporter to save money, budgetary money, when sure. they made the TV shows. Because instead of them having to animate them flying down to the surface all the time or whatever that plant, that week's planet was, they just mm -hmm. beamed them down. Um, Great so, idea. So, so here it is. From plot That's perspective. totally Roddenberry, I think. Yeah. yeah. So here's, here's the problem with, first off, it would take an immense amount of energy. Um, but the thing that bothers me the most is, you gotta look at it like this. The, the transporter device would have to scan you, know exactly where every atom is in your body, like mm -hmm. take that snapshot. Then, you know, the, I think it's a waste to, to have to like turn your body into energy and then move that energy down. They could just take matter down there and reconstruct you, but this is how it works. It deconstructs you, turns you into energy, beams that energy down. To a plasma, basically, right? You're essentially a plasma. Yeah, I guess so. And then it, it, tr it transforms the energy back into the exact matter that it needs, right? So the exact atoms, and then places those atoms exactly where they need to be placed next to each other in order to reconstruct you. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you can't just blithely say, do manipulate this en energy without talking about, well, how much energy were you talking about? We're talking about converting a human body into, into energy, into energy a it would la, blow up the e, ship. e equals mc squared. But we're talking about something like four gigatons. The average person contains four gigatons of, pot of potential energy. They're taking four gigatons, four thousand megatons of energy, and like, okay, now I'm going to start. I'm going to manipulate this and do this with it. That is, I'm going to beam it down to the planet. Right, that's and destroy a tremendous it. Yeah. amount of. I mean, why you could why not why not put like a uh, a person sized object in the transporter and beam that energy into your enemy? I mean, that's I guess, yeah. I guess that's what a photon torpedo is, right? Yeah. But I mean, that's so much energy. The fact that some any technology could manipulate it is just like it's just, mind numbing. It is incredibly inefficient mm -hmm. to turn yes. a person of mass into energy and then back into mass. You, you're right, you're better off you know, you, using mass that's there already, which would be interesting, like, you know, so I think. Send the information, yeah, I mean, not send, the energy. Yeah, send but, the information. But, so let's say you had like a receptacle. Continuity. Yeah, there's a continuity problem, they don't, don't get started. So you have, let's say, the, uh, at the receiving end, you basically have a, a 200 pound pile of goo yeah. that then gets turned into into a person. So you don't have to transfer the energy there, you just have to transfer the information there. Yeah, but then but you still have to, on an atomic level, manipulate that 
that matter and turn it into and, and you know to have every atom go into place. I like, can buy that mean? though. It's a three D printer. It's a goddamn three D printer, basically, right? I mean, that's what we're talking about—a fast three D three D printer. Yeah, but I know, but not it's impossible. But not it is impossible. remote, though. It's not like a physical thing that's picking up matter and putting it someplace. It's it's, it's, it's just yeah. It's just the energy maybe, itself is reforming into the person at the other end with no right. nothing at the other right. end. Right. If this is going to happen, it's going to be beaming the information and then constructing that person. And then is it is it a is it a destructive scanning where you, they actually yeah. have to destroy you to recreate you and the people won't care like yeah this is still me yeah. it's the same pattern that's all that I am is just, and then it gets into the continuity thing is, is it really the, the same person well, I, it, it isn't though because the, by essence of what this m the machine could do it, it, can, it can read your pattern know exactly what your pattern is and it could literally with other matter <clears throat> And with other matter, it could just recreate you, mm -hmm. right? So then it could create right. multiple versions of you. It yes. doesn't need the energy that you contain in your body is, is it's not- irrelevant. It's irrelevant yeah. because it could be anything. If you ate a different sandwich last week, you would have different energy but in your body. The, the other question is, I mean, yeah, without getting into the continuity issue too deeply, the other question is how much information would it require? Oh, right. And, right, and right, right. how accurately would you have to duplicate it? Like, for example, would you really need to worry about quantum the quantum states? state of Probably every not. particle? Let's say you didn't. Let's say you didn't even necessarily need to worry too much about the exact configuration of where each cell is with relationship to every other cell. You know what I mean? So it, it's creating a version of you that that's close enough. That's close enough. That's acceptable. To but yeah, it's like you? using. It's like yeah. You don't have to like if you create a tree in in uh, artificial intelligence. You generate a tree. Do you have to say where each leaf goes, or you just have rules that explain how the leaves are placed? But Steve, I think everywhere in the body is fine except the brain. except the brain, right? right? Because right. you're right. Because, that you're right. Yeah. I was going to get to that. So. So yeah, so I, I would buy that. Like you're creating basically an algorithmic you, not did not a detailed you, like more of a more of a of a um, a recipe rather than a blueprint, mm -hmm. right? But but the brain, if you did that to the brain, I think it it would it would not be you. Yeah. I think it would lose too much. Right. Yeah. But even that said, I don't think you would need to specify the exact quantum state. No, but of how your brain. but how detailed would you need yes. to get in order for it to really be you? And we and don't not have... only you, but your actually your mental state. That's the other thing. It's one thing to arrive at the other end and like be waking up from a dream and you're basically you and you have your memories, but, but to have continuity of your moment to moment mental state, that seems really yeah. implausible. The, I think the amount of information that would need to be instantly captured and, and, re, and uh, recorded, it would be way too It's massive. a no. It's just it's a, a no. It's yeah. a, it's just a, a no. It's a, a straight up no what, for all the reasons that we stated. I like looking at it like, uh, I think it's more it's more pleasing to me anyway, that this idea of basically taking your energy, your mass, your your atoms, and turning them to energy and then putting them back the same exact way. There's something more pleasing to that because it's still, I mean, what if every atom in your body went 10 feet out and 10 feet back? I mean, would that, would that still be you? That would have that, to me. That's like that's still you. Every every atom's just where they I, were. I don't think so. I think the second <laughs> the second you break continuity, it's no longer the same consciousness. But that is better than than sending the information and recreating you. That's less. All right. I, I, clear, right. I clearly need to. I clearly pleasing. need to look at the camera and tell the audience. You would never step into it. Do transport. not ever <laughs> let anybody transport you the way that they do in Star Trek. They're killing you. That's it. Don't, don't, let's move on. I, I, have, I don't I have disagree. A, I, I, you have another. You have one more technology. I have, I have time one. for one more technology. I have a cool one. And Bob and I talked yeah. about this on the way over here today. The shrinking or enlarging oh. of an object, uh, yeah. right? So, like an Ant Man. You mean like penis it. enlargement? What? <laughs> yeah, if you could do it, I mean, I would, I would risk it. No, but but, the, but I saw on an email that I got that. You can do it. <laughs> so here, here's basically what's happening in Ant Man. They have come up with a way to increase the size of something. And it doesn't lose any, you know, it basically just gets bigger. Yeah. And it, it works or decrease the size of something. Yeah. So they could take a car, shrink it down, put it in their pocket, run somewhere, put the car down, put and make it come back, and the car works perfectly. Yeah. There's so many things wrong so with that. So many this. things wrong with that. It's yeah. fun and I love the movies. And yeah, I can they were suspend, fun. I can I can I can watch it and not have it hurt too much. But <laughs> but this is here, here's an example. If you take a car and you shrink it down, it's losing detail. 
Mm -hmm. you, you would actually have to shrink the atoms down, or at least the space between the atoms, which means the, things be the thing becomes incredibly heavy. Right. Which is a problem. And that's what they say, though. There's also, it's not just Ant-Man, there's also Adam man which is like, yeah. the DC version of it. But, and, they, and they do throw out comments of, like, like what? it's like atomic compression. We're decreasing the space in, you know, between and inside the atoms. You know, like if you take the electron shell, because most of the atoms in the nucleus is very tiny in the mm. middle, and you it's have the electron shell. It's mostly nothing. It's, if you can, mostly, it's mostly nothing. nothing. How would you decrease it? I'm just saying, it's, if we, Wait. If, that's a separate question. The like, how would it work? But let's say you could figure out some way to collapse that okay. electron shell down to that, so that it's you know significantly smaller. Would it still function though? As a, as the that's same a object? good question. So then, are you changing? The, the the way things would interact. Yes, you, you are know. changing the laws of physics. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Which is why this is impossible. Right. But okay, right. just right. throwing that out there. But but you're right. But I'm saying even if we put those sort of laws of physics things aside for a second. Pesky little things. Yeah, pesky little things, which make it impossible. But even then, you're right, Jay. And that's like really bothered like when the Ant Man movie, you know, the, the, he shrank he shrinks a building down to this like the and size of a suitcase. A briefcase, yeah. It is a suit it is a briefcase. It is a suitcase. And then he carries it around. It's like, no, that would have to weigh millions of tons. I mean, and yeah. it would fall into the earth. Yeah, that's the other thing. Where's the mass? Otherwise, you have to ask, where's the mass going? And then when you re-enlarge it, where's the mass coming from? Right. And it, 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 again, if you don't say energy for the reasons that we said with the, you know, <laughs> with the transportation, because the amount of energy is massive. One conversion I heard, just to put this in mental image, if you, if you, um, converted matter 100% into energy in, and the amount of energy necessary to put a space shuttle into low Earth orbit, mm -hmm. how much mass is that? One ounce. Right. One yeah. ounce of mass that's, completely converted to energy, you put the space shuttle into orbit. That's so, the power of E equals mc squared, that's right? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> because because energy, energy, when you think about right, the amount right. of energy that isn't right. just the tiniest little yeah. bit of mass. So, yeah, and that's because, well, I like this point though, Steve, you've got energy on one side of the equation, you've got mass times the speed of light squared. Speed of light squared is a gargantuan it's number, a gargantuan so you need number. a tiny mass <laughs> times a huge number, and on the other side of the equation, lots of energy. Right, right. That's E equals so, mc squared. Yeah, so you, so it doesn't, it's not plausible that they're just making mass come and go. And if you keep the mass constant, which by their own pseudo explanations, it should be constant, yeah. then that's not what we're seeing, yeah. right? right. You should have a, two, when, the, when he's, the guy's this big, he should still weigh 200 pounds. Right. You know, well, but, the suit but on. they kind of use it when they want to, because when, when Ant-Man hits someone- He has momentum, yeah. He, it is kind of like, when yeah. he's small, he is kind of like a real person, uh, the, the weight of a real mm -hmm. body doing it. So it just, you know, then when he enlarges himself physically, his physicality wouldn't be able to even hold himself up. Yes. You know, right? He would collapse. So, yeah. right. It's like a, and then a huge ant that, yeah, and that's then of course, getting, work. when they, he sh shrinks down to like subatomic particle size. It. Now what's happening, that's not decreasing the space within an atom. You're actually making the atoms smaller. Yeah. You know? Bob and I were saying before, like, how would they even how, how would they breathe? breathe? How right. would you breathe? You're breathing these huge oxygen molecules, yeah. you know? <laughs> I like my oxygen chunky. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's end with artificial intelligence. I think this is this one is a few different variables here. So one of them You mean general intelligence. General intelligence. AGI. Right. So artificial intelligence, though, yes. We have it. We have it, yeah. and it'll get a lot better, but it won't be conscious. If we if we come up with a general intelligence where it's gonna be a, a basically a non- Bio, biology um, brain yeah. that becomes conscious. I'm saying yes. I'm saying Absolutely. eventually we could do it. Again, nothing in the laws of physics that makes it impossible. Right. If I think about it, you would be saying that there's something special, something special about electrochemical, yeah. squishy yeah. meat brain that can make it self-aware and that no other arrangement of non-biological matter can create self-awareness and consciousness I, I call bullshit on that. Like, yeah, why? No, there's no reason. There's no no one if there's one thing we've learned, there's nothing special about yeah. people and, and, and biology probably as well, well. There's no cogent argument that makes AGI in, in silico or whatever you want, it, whatever the substrate's yeah. going to be impossible. Yes. And not right. even impractical. It's just, we'll get there eventually. It's just a really difficult problem. Super. Now, the, the mind is the most complicated thing yeah. in the universe that right. we're aware of. So, so, yeah, this is tough. A lot of people point to the failed predictions like made 50 years ago. Well, they I said cares. we would have it by whatever, 2000. So what? I know, that's my, my question. So, what? Well, we we fail in those, those time frames yeah. every single day. The scientists you know, underestimate how long it's going to take. It's a lot harder things. than we thought. We were just talking. Just like show this fusion week. as well. About, yeah, yeah we have fusion, you know, uh, room temperature superconducting, flying cars. These things are all a lot harder than we thought. Yeah. And, and you know, we may never really get them, they may never be practical, 
Um, they're, they're not impossible. But AI is one of those things that we're making steady progress. And in every meaningful metric that would that impact the, you know, our ability to make AGI. And you know, it, maybe it's an order of magnitude harder even than we think right now when, when it comes down to it or there's some things we still need to learn about the brain. I do think that we will in a way evolve AGI yeah, without yeah. fully understanding it. We won't necessarily, again, build it piece by piece, but we may come up with like neural networks that kind of, you know, and, and evolutionary algorithms that result in AI, but we didn't, you know what I mean, without us designing it piece by piece. Right, exactly. Or another method is to just to image uh, general intelligence that we know works, a human brain. Just right. duplicate just, it. Just duplicate that in, in the computer. I, and, hope that, uh, I hope that and we... And then overclock it. I mean, they've got a <laughs> supercomputer. Right? Come on. Watch out for the heat, though. you got to be yeah, able to speed that heat. That's right. I, I hope need those superconductors. That's right. Exactly. I hope, though, that we basically become those... The, 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 you know, I, I want humans to become those creatures. Well, we you probably I mean? will be. Yeah. You know, we probably will... You know, this, these are going to be cybernetics. Now, yep. this is, you know, they, I think there will also be standalone AI, but I think at the same time, because why not? You know, there, our ability to interface with machines also is happening, and we could sort of make this another item. What about cyborg, cybernetic technology? Absolutely. Absolutely. One thing that we've absolutely learned over the last 20 years yeah. is that there really is no theoretical limit to the ability of the brain to interface with computers and to incorporate that into its functioning. It works. The, the tech works. There's, you know, it's not, we can do it. You know, uh, the brain can, is plastic enough. It has the ability. It's all about plasticity. Yeah, it's all, it, it, our, the mammalian brains are plastic. They can adapt to new information, to new connections, to new uses, and that includes electrical impulses coming from computer chips. Absolutely. So, so there's no reason why that won't work. Let's let's do parallels to science fiction. Now. Luke Skywalker's fake hand. I think. Yeah, I think totally. the, the touch and feel. I mean, my, have my, it now. my biggest concern is like, can they connect it to the body? You know, yeah, like totally. Okay, that's great. We have, I mean, I said, these exist now. Just they're just really chumpy. You know, this is really just incremental improvements from where we are now to Luke Skywalker. But we hand. need we need to be able to 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 make synthetic skin and, and tissue yeah. and bone connect to the real thing. That, that's one thing that I'm sure someday we'll be, we'll be able to figure it out. It doesn't seem implausible. Again, we have really yeah, primitive right. versions of all that now. But organ replacement, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, uh, your computer brain interface connect, we're already seeing it. We're already seeing yeah, yeah. the very beginnings of that. So I don't think that that's a I think either. I think that eventually that not only will we have anal you know, uh, analogs for, for organs and, and yeah. skin, but I think we'll eventually exceed what our, sure. what the, our naturally evolved organs and skin can do even now. Yeah. I mean, uh, with, with genetic modification and CRISPR, I mean, sure, it could take a while, but I mean, can you imagine making organs and and uh, and parts of your body that are exceed what we have? Yeah. Even uh, eyes, it's it's possible. Yeah, and There's we actually speaking against that. that we that we also happen. may alter ourselves to mesh more seamlessly with cybernetics. Like the two things will happen together. Um, Give me a for instance on that. I'm just saying, like, yeah. So you know, if you, we will, we will weave together the best of genetic manipulation and cybernetic technology oh, so that they work together to create the, the best right. final outcome. So the final sort of manifestation on this thing, I think, I think we'll have to end is the matrix, right? Mm -hmm. Can that brain machine interface be so robust that it c can create a seamless experience of a virtual reality? What do you think? I think, yeah. Why not? Absolutely, why not? So it's, at some point you're saying that we would have to have a device that probably an implant that's yeah. feeding information in somehow. That's interfacing with your brain robustly enough that it can replace all of your sensory input. Okay. Oh, God, yeah. Sure, but yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? In fact, I'll do a fun little segue with that. I think that's why one of the reasons why we haven't encountered any other, any other <laughs> alien signals because I think that... It's not inevitable, but I think it's very likely that civilizations turn inward when they get more sophisticated, living in their own virtual universes at, at hyper speeds. I mean, they're living essentially living a you know say a a year in a matter of days type of thing, and that's one of the reasons why they're not going to look outwards because it's too slow. Everything's too slow. Nature too is too far slow. away. So meat space so is why inconvenient. It, that's what you're saying. Yeah, it will become. I my that's, idea, that's, it will become inconvenient and annoyingly slow. Because once you do, it's a that, reasonable though, speculation. We don't really know. Right. But it's a perfectly reasonable speculation. Like if you're in the matrix, then you can make magic exist. Every, yeah. Everything is on the table at yeah. that point because it's all virtual. So you could re remake reality, even though it's virtual right? reality. It's real enough for you. 
to be whatever you want it to be. I do right. think the allure that we, why, yeah, why go on a generation ship and go through radiation right. and space and all these distances when you could just create, you know, virtual can, utopia. Right, can you imagine a, a virtual civilization and then you, dis, you disconnect and you're back in your biological body and you go for a stroll, right? And then you come back an hour later and like, Three months have passed. Like, what did I miss? You know, what movies have come out? I mean, I think that's that's going to drive people right to now, not want to deal with the universe. I, I would do that for 2020. This because like I would love to like <laughs> I'm going to unplug for three days and miss the next six months. <laughs> yeah, you know? just make sure somebody's feeding you and cleaning you. You know. So guys, thank you for watching this episode. We loved it. I mean, God, there were so many things that we had on our list. We, we just getting started. This could have been three hours. I know, but we were hoping that you're enjoying the conference. Um, the, uh, yeah, for those at the conference, Jay and I will be joining via Zoom to answer your questions for the rest of our, our panel. Well, time. we may have very well have been chatting with them the entire time. That's true. Right. I, I think that's, okay. that's what we might do. I yeah. will be at a haunted house. We will house have chatted with you. As yeah. a zombie, <laughs> scaring the crap out of everybody. So it's, sorry I can't make the so live portion. We time traveled in a weird kind we of way. Did. Right? <laughs> we did. And we, we coexisted in two places at the same time. <laughs> that's right. You never know You're what's going to create happen. a black hole if you get too I'll many chat. That was a good point, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you enjoy uh, this show, you can go to Alpha Quadrant 6. That's Alpha Quadrant and the number 6.com. Go to our website. Everything that we do is connected via the website. And have a great, have a great conference. We'll see you soon.